Hi, I'm Mark Rutten. Welcome back to Nomad Boat Building, and this is part two of our Building a Skin on Frame Tahi Kayak series. Now, just to recap, a Tahi Kayak is a composite interpretation of a traditional Greenlandic kayak. We're reverse engineering that design back to its original skin on frame construction, which is not necessarily the easiest thing to do because the composite kayak doesn't have to adhere to the exact same rules of physics that a wooden structure does. You can get shapes in the composite material that are much more difficult to achieve in the wooden framework. That's kind of the fun and the challenge of doing this exercise. Now this is a video companion to a set of builder's drawings that I have available on my website so that you can try and build this boat yourself. I'll have more information on that at the end of the video. Now I'm building this kayak in the form of a scale model because this time around that was the request I had from a customer, but I want to let you know that building at scale is almost identical to building at full size. So if you want to try this at home, I really encourage you to try a scale model first. So in the last episode, we got our gunnel structure assembled, and today we're going to start putting together our deck beams and installing our stems. Let's get right down to it. Okay, I do deck beams very, very simply. I just do butt joints with a compound angle on them. And so I've got my deck beam position. And what I usually do is I will uh, set the deck beam on the position it wants to get placed at and simply mark on the inside what that angle is. And then we cut it on the bandsaw. With the bandsaw set to the same rake as the gunnels, which is 20 degrees in this case. But I like to have these deck beams sit down below the surface. So if I mark it right there, it will fit right there just perfectly. I want it to be a little bit smaller. So what I'm doing is I'm coming back about half the distance, half the thickness of that deck beam or half the width. So I'll use the deck beam itself to mark it like so, just so that I've got it even. I'll bring it back about that far. Go on the inside, carefully just trace along the edge there, and then we've got two lines. We take those over to the bandsaw. So the bandsaw is kicked over 20 degrees. <laughs> So all we had to do there was keep the part that we want to keep on the downhill side of the blade and just follow our line. When we flip it over, you can see we have got our compound angles there, and that'll drop right into the boat. So there we go. Actually, this one, I, uh, despite the fact that I set this back, it's still sitting pretty flush, but you know, it's not super critical necessarily that you have your deck beams sit in the same spot that you marked them. The only really critical one would be your backrest and your knee brace and your foot brace with those three relative to each other. Otherwise, shifting them, you know, an inch or something like that in order to achieve what you want is not a big deal. Now the ones I did towards the ends, there's a greater taper there and so that shift is more dramatic. So where the way I marked them there, they were definitely falling more in line with where I want them to go. This one I probably just could have gone like a full width back from the edge and that would have given me the right drop. In fact I think I'll just trim these back a little bit so that it fits where I want it to. Now I'm just using a little bit of CA glue to tack these in place but in the real thing I would be using some hot glue to do this. And For years I did it without glue and the glue is not there to do anything but hold it temporarily while I dowel it. But I found by using the glue, it made the doweling go so much easier. Because otherwise, as you're putting the dowels in, you're you're fighting to keep this located and it wants to jump around and 
shift on you and it, uh, it's really troublesome. So just a little dab of glue, keep it from shifting around, makes all the difference in the world. Now for pinning all of these deck beams in place, I just use dowels and generally I have a simple system where we uh, try and land on the center of the, the vertical center of the deck beam. The first one will go in normally right in line with the deck beam about a quarter of the way from the edge. Again, you got to start your drill square to the, to the to the gunnel and then tip it up once you get a bite. Okay, and this is why I like to glue it in place because if I were doing this right now, as soon as I touch the deck beam with my drill bit, the deck beam is going to want to pop. Now the second one, we do the same thing. I come over, but this time I'm coming closer to the like the forward corner of where that deck beam lands. Then I'll get that started, but then I'll go square to the gunnel so that it, in, in, in effect, toenails these uh, that deck beam in place. So it's coming in at maybe like a 10 degree angle to the direction of the deck beam or the alignment of the deck beam. Just like that. We want to spread these apart as far as we can without risking them protruding through the corner of the deck beam and weakening it. Once the dowels are fitted and trimmed off, it's time for lashing. So first I need to drill some holes. I use nominally an eighth inch diameter drill bit. These holes are drilled through the deck beam, two fingers width from the inside of the gunnel, and they're drilled through the gunnel, one fingers width up from the bottom and two fingers forward or aft of the deck beam. And then we start lashing. And the mantra I have for lashing with the gunnels inverted is in from the outside and up from the bottom as you can see here we pass that lashing through three times leaving it just a little bit loose we don't pull it tight and then we do half hitches off each side of that wrapping three half hitches now to make them secure i either pass my needle back through the bundle again and do one more half hitch to lock it off or I'll just tie the two ends together. Next I'm going to do my app stringers. They usually land, oh, about a, uh, a palm's width away from the edges of the gunnels. They go on the two deck beams that are immediately after the cockpit area. And the stringers themselves are usually about a half inch thick by about an inch and a half to two inches wide. They serve several purposes. Firstly, they give you some place to sit when you're getting in or out of the kayak. These kayaks require a bit of a shimmy to get into because of the small entry. They also carry the back of the cockpit hoop and so part of their job is to provide a good landing for that hoop so that it doesn't rock back and forth. So you want that hoop to touch on the two deck stringers. Now I usually round off the end of the stringer that is closest to the cockpit 
and that's just to make sure that there's a soft surface there if your back touches it and at the back end I will taper them off so that they don't protrude up and show through the skin. Now these deck beams also help to support anything that you might want to store on that back deck while you're paddling. They also aid in self rescues because they usually have deck lines running over top of them with a couple toggles under which you pass your paddles to use a paddle float. And if you want to do hatches, I've drawn out how I would normally do a hatch. I make this plywood panel that you would fasten in here, or you could move it farther back if you wanted to. And then you use a plastic hatch, a uh, piece of hardware that fastens onto that. You skin the boat with the skin stitched onto that plywood panel. And then after, the, after you've coated it, you cut the hole out and then you glue in your screw and glue in your your hatch whatever type of hatch you want to use i just want to take a moment to say that these videos are supported by my followers on patreon if you can help me out on patreon i really appreciate that but you can also help me out by buying some product from starbond you'll notice i'm using starbond cyanoacrylate adhesives throughout this project i really like starbond stuff and i think you will too you can get 10 percent off when you use the coupon code nomad10 by following the link in the description Try out some Star Bond. You're going to like it. This next step I usually save for after the boat is framed and I can put a paddler into the boat. But we're going to fit the knee brace and masic. Now the knee brace is obvious. It's something you bear your knees against. The masic is a deck beam that just supports the front of the cockpit hoop. Now it's not absolutely vital that these be two different elements but it is common in the Greenlandic tradition to have two separate deck beams that serve these purposes. With the regular deck beams, we just lay them across the gunnels and we trace underneath to mark their width, but then we flip them over when we install them in the boat. We can't do that with the mastic and knee brace, so we need to find our widths and angles and we need to project them up the depth that we want them to sit inside the gunnels. And from there, we can design the height of the deck beam, the thickness of the deck beam, and any contours that we want to use in order to support our knees and to support our forward deck stringers. Now the deck beam sitting on the bench, that's the masic, and now I'm forming the knee brace. There are all kinds of different configurations of masic and knee brace. At the simplest form, they're just two deck beams that are cut or bent to the same curve, and one of them sits about an inch higher than the other. I'm doing a slightly different version in which we have a sawn configuration in which the, both braces look quite different. One of them has got notches to carry the deck stringers and the other one's just got a smooth curve. The gunnels are usually close enough to parallel at this point that I'll just set the bandsaw for a square cut. I'll cut out all of my shapes and then I'll just use a chisel to tweak the angles that are required for that final fit. Now here's an important detail I didn't get on video. On the bottom of the gunnels where we've joined the ends, that ramp has got two knuckles sticking up right now. We need to flatten that out so the stem has something to sit on. Okay, stems. So I, uh, at first I tried pulling some stem patterns off my drawings, but I completely screwed up the scale. So I'm gonna show you the method I would actually be using if I were doing designing stems from scratch. Um, and I do it all by eye usually. So you start out with a piece of stock that's long enough that it's gonna, it's gonna represent your whole stem length, obviously, plus a little more. These are cut to my finished size relative to what my drawings are dictating, but I don't usually work off drawings. So you'd start with a piece of stock and actually what I, what I usually do is I start with a piece of door skin or something sacrificial and in this case, I've just cut a wedge on the side, but it could just be, I could be doing this with the, um, with just a square edge. I'm doing this because it notches me down over the end of the, the gunnel over here. I know I want to protrude this much out past the end of my gunnel, so that's why I've set that at that length. And in theory, my stem should come to about here. I realize <laughs> once again, I've screwed up where my last rib goes. Boy, you think I could, planning that out would help me, but it didn't work. Didn't help me at all in the end. Okay, so what I usually do, you get your sacrificial something and uh, we'll set up this guy on here. 
And the angle of this has an effect on that, right? So uh, if you want a really long raking stem, you probably want a lower angle here. If you want something that's a little steeper, only because I usually just work with whatever the run of the grain is here, right? So if you want shorter stems, you might make a, a shorter ramp here. If you want a greater distance between the end of the stem and where it turns, you want a shallower angle here. Down here, we're gonna set up a, a, a little brace that uh, will hold our keel at the desired height. With that in place, then we can spring the keel over here and we can find out where the height is here. And then a real boat, I do this by eye. And generally, I sort of eyeball where the keel crosses the stem. And I usually go for about a hand span, roughly. Maybe a little bit more at the bow, maybe a little less at the stern, depending how I'm feeling. But that's my sort of eyeball. My eyeball method is to try and thumb at the edge of the gunnel, pinky at the, at the keel, something like that. And of course, you know, the, this is the height that's really important right back here, because this has got to be low enough that if you're a roller and you want to be able to do a layback roll, you need to be able to sort of arch your back. And so if you make your boat too deep, you won't be able to do that. You need to be able to touch your head to the back deck as you arch your back. If you can't do that, your, your boat's too deep for rolling. Yeah, so a little blurb. Like I say, this is literally how I do it on the real thing. I will actually use hot glue on the real boat. Okay, so there we go. That's some position. I'll do the same thing at the stern. Now I'm gonna make my my T brace here. Okay, so what I'm making here is what I call my T brace. Okay, so the T brace is describing a distance from the bottom of your backrest deck beam to the top of your keel. So inverted. So I'll, what I'll do is, I mean, this is this is the full keel height there. So I'll just I'll call that the full keel height. But in general, you want the height from the top of your deck beam, which would be like there to there to be the same as this. This is the height from where your butt sits on the ground to where your back can actually make a bend. So any higher than this and you're running, you're losing space, you're losing bending space. So that's the sort of, that's the goal. Ideally you want to have a, um, a center line drawn on here. And a center line drawn on your your backrest. So that'll sit over here. So that's what the keel is going to sit on top of and allow it to, it's going to maintain the height. So you, and you need to make sure the keel stays there. So usually you have to almost like lash the keel down because if you leave it just floating, you're probably going to start pushing it up as you start framing the boat. Okay, I'll leave this floating for now, but ultimately what I want to do is make sure I've got a a center point on my my backrest and then I'll align this to the center point and clamp it in place. So now I can drop this into here and I can set this off center so that it jives up with my temporary stems for the moment. With that in place I can muck around with how this is shaped. Right? So I can stick a clamp on here right? and I can put a clamp on the other one and I can start playing with the heights like so. All right now I can play around with this and now if I were building the real boat this is where I'd be sticking my taking my hand here and right right at this sort of junction area where I think the stem is going to interact with the keel. That's where I start measuring my hand span. Now I'm going to pull a dimension off of my drawing probably like pick this as a registration point and find out what my height is relative to the drawing and set it there and that'll where that's where I'm going to work from on this model. I've never drawn a skin on frame pack out 
full size and worked from that drawing, but you could totally do that. Um, and that wouldn't be a crazy thing to do if you're just doing this for the first time to rather than go purely by the methodology, although I, I think you can build just fine with just the methodology, but drawing it up full size could really help you solve a lot of these problems right here. If doing them in, in, in 3D in real life, like I'm doing it here, seems really awkward to you, then then by all means, drawing it full size. The only trick to drawing it full size first is you need to make sure that you are being very careful about how you draw the gunnel, the sweep of the gunnels, because it has to jive with how they will sweep in real life if you were to take straight stock and bend it around, bend it around a point with a certain width at a given angle and then touching at the ends. And of course, because we're building the tahi here that is that has a, a banana for a shear, you need to take that into consideration too. So there's some real noodle bending you got to do to get that just so, but it's totally doable. Because in the drawings, the the, the stem and keel kind of round out somewhere back here. I needed to find a definite point at which to measure from. So I took a my ruler here and I laid it on the drawing so that it lined up with the bottom of the keel and extended the line past the line of the keel, like so. Let's see if I can do that with this here, right? In the drawing, this doesn't go this far. It kind of rounds out about here. And then I took this distance off of the drawing from the bottom of the ruler to this point where the haunch is, because it's an easy spot to locate. Measured that, and it's like seven and a half inches at the bow and about seven inches at the stern at those points. And so I've scaled those down to this one third scale and laid this off. So now I know that my keel is going to come up. The bottom of it here is gonna be along this line, a softer pencil for drawing that in. I'll just draw that in carefully. Okay, and on top, I'm gonna do a haunched stem so it haunches, notches around the, the keel. And so I'll go back to my drawings and I'll figure out where this stop is. And from there I can start to develop the shape. What I'll usually do is make the stem a bit larger, um, but I'll take a bat and then I'll spring it right through here and find out what this line is here. And then of course there's a deck that's gonna join these two. So you then subtract the deck from that. Okay, so if I take a little batten like so, on the real thing, I would do exactly this. I would just sandwich it along the, the shear and I would play around with, with this shape here and try and get it just right. So this, this little haunch here needs to be deep enough to accommodate the, um, the fact that this is going to run across it and create, possibly raise it up. And of course your deck, whatever you do for your deck here has to make up this, this difference that's in here. So what's easiest is if this is big enough and wide enough that it passes right down and then uh, I probably let, went a little shy on this thing and should have made it a bit deeper. And I need to try and eyeball what this is going to look like. What I'm going to do is I'll do this. I'm going to put this straight edge right along my gunnels here. Maybe I'll go to the bottom. Maybe that'll be easier. Okay, and then right here at the end, I'm just going to measure what this distance is. Um, yeah, I guess we'll go including the deck. And it looks like I'm going to get, what is that? That's uh, two, three, I'll call it three and a half inches. Okay, and then I can, so now I've got a point at which I can spring my batten to on the model to see where that three and a half inch mark is. If I put my a steel ruler on the bottom of the gunnels. The same thing for the stern. And so then I get a line I can come reference there uh, and then the next thing I need to do is just figure try and figure out a way to um, copy this curve in mostly that'll probably be, be by eye so I'll 
take like a, a, this dimension here, like again at the haunch, whatever that finished dimension is, two, four, six inches, six and a, say like six and a quarter. So I'll just mark that on there and that'll be a point I know that I got a fair line through to get over to here. And again, I'll, then I'll find like where the tail end of mine thing has, thing has got to be and I'll measure there as well. That sort of thing, right? We need a straight, uh, straight line off the bottom of the gunnels here. So I'll just use my same batten. I won't put a clamp on here. So now we know roughly where that is. And I need to come down three and a half inches. So one third scale is like one, what's a third? So one and an eighth plus a smidge. Let's say we work it around here, one and an eighth. Plus a smidge. So somewhere about there. Okay, so then we'll take our little batten. Now we're just gonna move to the bottom of this. We'll clamp on. So now all I gotta do is spring this down to that point. Okay, and that is the line for my stem at the shear. And I measured it was six inches right here. So I know this is, uh, this was seven and some change. So six inches is gonna be two inches at scale. If I come here. Okay, so whatever I do, this is the point at which I got to fare through that, right about there. So I'll create a nice fair line that goes through there, and then fares into the this bottom of the stem here somewhere, or bottom of the keel here somewhere. So again, I'm going to go back to my drawing and I'll just have a look at where I ended my keel relative to this point, you know, straight back, draw a line there, and then I know where my hump has got to be. And then the last thing you can do, this this little shape down here, is just is just purely aesthetic, just removing unnecessary material, leaving just enough for structure in through here. Okay, now we'll draw this out. Uh, so this is the stern one because it's easier to see on here. So this is the line that was my, uh, where my shear line extended over the length of the stem. So uh, this curve has got a bit too much curve for drawing that out. So I'll leave that alone. So this is the depth of my stem at the tip. And there's my greatest curvature point. And over here, this is where it notches into the keel. Okay, so basically what I need to try and draw in is something like this. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky and a little bit artistic because already that doesn't look like it quite work. It doesn't quite look like it works right. Um, so you basically you gotta, you gotta play around with it. Feels like if the keel was a bit shallower, it'd be easier. I'll start with using a different sweep. So there's a much longer sweep. Okay. Now what I wanna do is just try and find, you, you probably can't get it in, in one shot, right? You gotta, you might have to do it in two. So let's start by seeing if I can get this curve coming off of the keel looking right. And, and sometimes you might have to shallow out your keel. You can taper it a little bit 
Looks like that's what I'll have to do because this doesn't look like it's going to fit quite right. So the end of my keel will taper a little. See there's a haunch. Looks like that'll work. You look at it, you sight down the line to see how that looks. See how that makes a difference? This is throwing your eye off, make it look like there's a hard spot there. See how I get rid of that, just that little, that little smudge and it makes that line suddenly look fair. Okay, and so this, right down here, the straightest part of this sweep here. That's where my keel notches in, right there. And then, oh, I know what I forgot to bring. I neglected to draw this. This is the, the, the little flattened spot on my gunnels. So that's where it terminates. And so this is where I start playing around with the final shape. And so we can go something like this. I think I've made this the full length according to my drawing, so we'll Try and mimic that just to keep try and keep some consistency happening here. Okay. So now we can get a better feel for how that stem is going to look. And then of course the the um, we also have to think about the the deck. So let's see. So if that is more or less the finished shape, this is where my deck haunch is. So I'm just going to bring that right down because we're going to do, just do a solid deck. In fact, I don't even want to, I don't even want to curve that necessarily. Ideally, what you do is you have a straight deck and then the top of it gets shaped to whatever this curve is. So because I'm bringing it all the way through. So what I think I'll do is uh, just have a, I'll probably put this back up there and I'll see how this little haunch transmits through and whether or not I need to uh, monkey around with, with that angle there. About like that. Okay, so I would cut to that line. This gets added on as a separate part. So now what I'll do, this is my pattern. So I'll cut this out on the bandsaw and then I'll trace this onto my finished stock and I'll hang on to this for future use. So if I do another boat, oh, I, I know I, got, I can cut this out and just leave a little bit of slop in a few areas in order to fit the new boat to this stem pattern. We've got our framework here, our deck structure, and the stem is just about ready to go on. So here's our stem going on there. And there's one detail that we need to take care of before we put that on. At least it's a good idea to take care of it now. And that is preparing for the deck. So when we made this stem, we designed it such that it would get a deck that attaches to the gunnels here and carries through onto the stem. Now in my normal construction, the deck is only about 12 inches long. So the six inches lands on the gunnel structure and then the other six inches lands on the stem. <clears throat> and part of that, part of the job of that is to provide a, a rigid connection here because the, otherwise all we have are lashings that hold this on, but we don't want this tweaking out of, out of direction, obviously, when it's in use. So those lashings make for, you know, a good flexible joint this way, but we ideally would like something that keeps it from waggling back and forth, so hence the deck. The other job it does is it 
fares a line between the gunnel structure and the stem. And in my boats, those are usually, there's usually a hollow form in here. And so it just, it continues the hollow form right through. So there's sort of a, a concavity in here, which allows the, the gunnels and stem to come together. In the case of the Tahi kayak, it's a very full line. So in theory, this line should largely just continue through as kind of a straight line to the end of the stem. It may not exactly because it's it's uh, working at scale. It's hard to sort of get these things exactly right. And maybe my methodology is a bit wrong in that perhaps I should be, these shouldn't be coming together quite so tightly. I'm still in the phase of sort of trying to find the, 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 the happy medium between the exact shape of the Tahi kayak and the methodology of constructing these frameworks. So anyhow, the uh, the point I'm trying to make is we have this little notch that we cut on the bandsaw ahead of time, and that's just to help get us started on this. But we need to flatten it out because right now there's a crown on these, and we want a flat line or flat plane that allows this deck, which will be like a normally in real life a piece of like half inch thick material that continues forward and gets all pegged in place. So what I usually do uh, <clears throat> is we, um, there's, there's different ways we can do it. Sometimes I will have my deck already made and I'll start curving the back side of this, uh, the, the joint between the deck and the, and the joints that are there in order to get it, get a nice clean joint. Um, here, I'm just going to use a saw. Try and line that up. No. I'm just cutting down till I touch the uh, corner. And then we can come in here with chisels and we can start to waste away the crown in the middle. So I'll start by just taking it down till I'm just about touching the outside corners. We'll leave a little bit of meat there so we don't go too far. In theory, these should be good and parallel to each other. In practice, it may not always work out that way, but we start with the theoretical and we work towards the practical or the actual. See, so right there, I've nominally flattened those out. I'm just going to take a rasp here to sort of try and see I've got a, probably a little bit more to come off on that side but this is sort of getting us close so now what I can do is I'll take um, I'll take a stick and put it down here somewhere make sure it's parallel to the center line or perpendicular to the center line of the boat and then I'll take another stick and drop it here I'll use these as winding sticks so I'm going to sight down and see if those are even it's a bit hard to see but this side needs to come down just a hair And that's what I thought when I was looking at it, because I could see there's just a little bit proud. Sometimes I like to just go with a chisel for this kind of detail work, because it can be hard when you're using a file, it can be hard to judge your angle. The file's good for just sort of uh, flattening out humps and things like that quickly. But ultimately, for accuracy, I much prefer a chisel. Okay, and I can also try and make sure these shoulders are squared up. Thank you. 
looking really good. We're almost there. Just a tiny, tiny bit more. That looks good. Now, just like I leveled out that notch that the deck sits on, and I used winding sticks to get it parallel with the surface of the boat at midships, we're gonna use the same principle on that ramp. The difference being is that I usually use a square. I'll set a square up on the ramp, and I'll set a square up on the, de the deck beam at the backrest, and then I'll adjust the ramp until those look lined up. Now the reason I don't use winding sticks for that is because the ramp, being a ramp, if you put a stick on there, if you skew it one way or the other, it's going to give you a reading that may or may not be accurate. If I used winding sticks, it's very possible for me to have that winding stick that's sitting on the ramp off a little bit, it's going to show high even though it's actually level. So when you use the squares instead, it's a little more accurate. It's easier to get it just bang on. Okay, so, so what will happen is the stem will get attached onto here. Um, I can already see that my stem has got a little bit of a haunch right here. But that's easy enough to fix now that this is done because I, I can plane in this direction and fare it all in. I can get a plane in there very easily and follow this line and try and create a nice fair shape. At least I that's the goal. Hopefully I can. So now on this side, I'm just gonna play around with making sure that this fit is nice and clean. And um, we've got some holes to drill. So we'll plan those out, drill the holes, and we'll tack this in place with glue, and then lash it. Okay, that's all the time we have for today, folks. We'll pick this up in the next episode. Now I'll remind you that this video is a companion piece to a set of builder's drawings that I have available on my website. The drawings include a lines drawing of a Tahi kayak, a deck arrangement, a framework drawing, some details, some full-size templates, and a document sort of outlining some of the ways that I approach this process. Now some folks have a little trouble finding the download when you purchase the drawings. The first page that pops up after you go through the checkout will have a blue box on it that says Tahi Kayak Drawings. You click in that box, that's your download. If you have any trouble, shoot me an email and we'll send them right over to you. So please join me again for the next episode of Building the Skin on Frame Tahi Kayak.